Hi, welcome to beautiful Auckland. I'm Kathy, and we're going to go through the country tracing the footsteps of my grandfather Harold Oscar Anderson and we start here in the beautiful city of Auckland where he arrived in 1904. And when he first arrived here he was actually arrested pretty much immediately because he had stolen the suit of somebody on board for which he spent two months in Mount Eden prison. But after that he worked the ships from here and taking cargo to and from and up and down the country coastline. So it's 110 years later, 2015, and some of Harold's Norwegian family have come to follow with us the footsteps of Harold and Andrina. So we have Rua, Vera, Venka, Rosa, and Magnoi. Should be good. So when Harold first came to New Zealand, there was plenty of work. They were building a rail link between Auckland and Wellington, and he worked on the railway. And he worked as a plate layer, which is putting the uh, bolts to keep the rail tracks on. And he also drove the horses to pull the tracks into the forest and in to build these big viaducts like this. We are in Raurimu and when they built the railway line through Raurimu they could not get up the hill so they had to build a spiral and Harold helped to build the spiral in 1906 and then in 1916 he came back here with his wife and his baby and lived in one of the little houses over there and worked as a labourer. Around 1915, Harold met Andrina Sanderson and a romance blossomed and they had a child, her name was Dorothy and she was born in May 1916. They themselves married in October 1916. And they went on to um, have five more children and they lived in the King Country during this time. The next child that was born was Harold, and Harold only lived 15 hours, and he's buried in the bush um, near Mangapehi. Then Eric Oscar was born in 1918, and he's my father. Olga Barbara was born in 1921. Frederick Andrew, born in 1924. And Thomas Keith, known as Keith, was born in 1935. Andrina was a remarkable woman. She only had one leg. She'd had polio as a child and when she was an early adult the leg was removed and so she would get around with one crutch and a walking stick and she brought up five children deep in the king country with just one leg and all of us have, um, all of us grandchildren have memories of her prodding us with her, the end of her walking stick and pointing and poking and um, some of them even said that the hook on her um, walking stick she put around their legs to pull them in. Once the railway was put through, Harold moved in to working in the forest and he worked in uh, mills like this or he worked in the actual cutting down of the trees and he did that for about 20 years. During this period they lived in a bush camp and the children grew up in the bush um, deep and long way from civilization. And the wood was brought down from the forest on tramways and taken to a mill such as this and processed. We are in Mangapehi and Harold lived here initially for a short period of time not soon after arriving in New Zealand. Then he came back um, about 1917. There was two mills here and a railway station. And once a year, the children and the family came down from Pukemako to Mangapehi and got on the train and went to Tikawiri for a big day out. The southernmost part where Harold lived was Ohakuni and Ohakuni is famous for carrots and Mount Ruapehu. He worked here on a farm 
and he lived here with his family and his daughter Olga was born here in 1921. In 1937, Andrina brought the children down out of the bush. The boys were getting older now and needed work. And so she brought them to Mananui, where the boys worked in a box factory. And Eric, on his first week, chopped his little finger off his left hand. Harold came down shortly after to join them. When Harold retired, um, Andrina and Harold and the children moved to Ongarui. And here behind us was a boarding house. The a tree to the right is the original tree. And they lived here for approximately three years and ran the boarding house. And the children, um, the younger two, Fred and Keith, went to the school down the road. And Eric worked at the Alice and Bernand sawmill. There is nothing left of the sawmill now, the Allison Banan sawmill, but this is where they brought the logs down here and took them to the train. And it was also the way that the local people would often walk to the sawmill, so Eric would walk down the road and through this path to the mill. <laughs> this is Lindsay McMillan and this is Audrey Walker and together they produced the book Ongarui a beautiful big fat book about this small town and they um, particularly um, Lindsay has lived here for a long time and when you came here what do you remember the boarding house I do remember it it was 1964 it was very derelict I remember it being very shabby funny old curtains tatty curtains hanging at the windows and no nobody went near it um, and what happened to it at the end? I th it was in the 60s sometime, it was pulled down. There were a lot of derelict buildings about that time and they decided that they had to be pulled down for safety. Mm -hmm. This was what the sawmill was like at its yeah. heyday. And then there, that's a very early picture of it when everyone was spanking new. And, now, and that's what it's like today. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Nothing there. Just You can just see the loading bay. Yeah, where they loaded the logs. The Lokis used to go right up into the bush as far as you can see there, about 23 k's, and they'd haul the logs down on the bogies, bring them down to the mill here where it's all cut up, and then it would be loaded at the loading ramps, which was just that strip of concrete there, and taken into the village and put onto the main rail, and a lot of it went to Hamilton, it was used for houses. And one of the reasons why Harold and Reen set up boarding houses was because um, Harold was getting older and he hurt his back. So Reen could run these boarding houses and he just did little odd jobs around the place. But there was a large one around this area called the Empire Hotel. And that was a very big hotel and well known in Hamilton. And just down at the end of the road was another one called the Windsor Hotel where they lived together before they went back to Tekawiri and then Reen came back there and that's where she died. I'm Rose Andrina, the eldest granddaughter of Harold Oscar. He was a lovely grandfather and they used to welcome us every time we went there, even though we lived apart from everyone else at the time. Um, he, Nana used to take, we called her Nana, she used to take me everywhere with her when I worked for her and they treated all their grandchildren the same and they seemed to just love everybody. Um, Harold name. himself, what was he like? Harold, he was a real gentleman. Never went out of the house without a shirt and tie on. And he was the, um, used to help Nana with, he, Nana became the breadwinner and he used to always have be there to help her, to set the fires going, to set the table, and just was there. And they were a good team then? They were a real good team. They seemed to just work together. And who was the boss? I think... <laughs> I think Andrew, Andrew was. <laughs> and tell us about her then. Um, as you all know, she had one leg quite... Um, say in her 20s and um, she had brought out these five children and she did cope with everything, every, she seemed to cope with everything. 
even with her one leg. She was a remarkable woman, and just, just Grandad was there for her. The, the, and what about the way he spoke? Broke, even in his old age, broken English. Yeah. You, you really had to sit and listen to him. And my first memories, of course, were in, when I was only four and a half at the Tikawiti Grand Central Hotel. And then, funnily enough, 20 years later, when he was eight in his 80s, he passed away there because his son, Fred, was managing the Grand Central Hotel. Oh, OK. Great. Yeah. This building is what was known as the Grand Central Hotel, which was a boarding house come hotel that Harold and Andrina leased for two years, 1941 and 42, and 1961 and 62. Harold died here in 1962. Even though Harold didn't talk about his life in Norway, it obviously haunted him all his life because when he was dying here, he was um, what the family thought was delirious, but he was frightened of somebody coming to get me there after me. And even to the point of just before death, he had got the strength to get out of bed and to put one leg in his trousers trying to escape from the police, the people after him. And then he fell back and died. So it's a sad end, really. Then in 2010, we were able to go to Norway and discover Harold's Norwegian family. And they welcomed us and showed us all of the places that Harold had lived. So now, a few years later, we are welcoming the Norwegian family to New Zealand and showing them where Harold lived and how he lived his life. Harold died in Tekawiti, but his funeral took place here in Purewa, Auckland and his ashes are scattered in the gardens around here. It's his final resting place. So this brings us to the end of our trip following in the footsteps of Harold Oscar Anderson when he lived in New Zealand, his New Zealand life. And in fact it completes a circle of how we went to Norway to find out about his life and now New Zealand and Norway are joined forever. Um, and it's been wonderful to spend time with the family to discover what Harold did. And for me, it was at times uh, emotional to go to the places where Harold lived. Um, the best part is spending time with the Haroldson family and then with the Anderson family. It's been wonderful. For us, it has been a great uh trip uh, through the country, together with Cathy Andros, and I have shown us uh, the places Harald Oscar and Andrina has uh, lived and, uh, and worked, uh, and it's great to be in this place in Auckland. And I think what has happened now is that the two families, the Norwegian family and the New Zealand family, which were once two families, is now one family that we feel part of Norway and I think now Norway feel, feels a part of us and we certainly have them in our heart as well now. So it has been a wonderful, wonderful experience. Along the way we've been able to show them some of New Zealand's most beautiful tourist spots.
And we've experienced some of our special New Zealand culture. It is uh, a green stone from New Zealand, from the South Island of New Zealand, and it's made into beautiful um, necklaces and other jewellery. And when you have one, you have someone place it on you for the blessing of it. It means strength and power and authority. And the same for Rua. And we hongi. Hongi touch noses. Twice. <laughs> and we introduce them to the delights of Marmite. Gorgeous stuff. And we've seen what it's like on our big sheep farms. Come here, Cody. And a special highlight has been meeting up with Harold's New Zealand family and introducing them to some of Harold's Norwegian family and we've all come together and enjoyed each other's company. come to an end and they have to go back to Norway. It's been wonderful having them here and getting to know them better and they have enjoyed themselves as well. So safe travels and uh, we hope to see you back here sometime. We love New Zealand. We are scary New Zealand. We have had a great time in New Zealand meeting the family. We have had a great time in New Zealand. 
blant annet når jeg møter familien. Vi har møtt a lot of other nice people. Vi har møtt mange andre hyggelige folk. It's a beautiful nature here. Det er kjempefin natur her. Thank you, Katie and Ross. Takk skal du ha, Katie and Ross. Bye-bye! Bye-bye!